Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Chantia here. So if you are new to my channel, this channel is dedicated to helping women live in a way that feels the most natural to them. And I'm just obsessed with the psychology of people. And so I love to just kind of watch people. And that's why I watch Mirror to First Sight and I like to give reviews on the cast members and see how their progress is going. I also do videos on other things like self-development and working on doing the inner work and the healing, which is a conscious eight-year journey for me. That's probably not even the right number. I feel like it's probably been longer than that. It's been a conscious eight-year journey for me and therefore I really love helping people to find ways to work on themselves a little bit more. So make sure you go ahead and check out my other videos so you can see that content as well. So let's go ahead and get into this review of Married First Sight. In this preview in the kickoff episode, we were shown a little bit more on who these cast members are, what their personalities are like. Therefore, I was able to kind of assess more accurately if they're going to maybe be able to sustain not only the experiment, but as a long-term couple after the show is over. Start with Katina and Elijah Wan. So, <laughs> some of the words that came up when I thought about this couple was messy and trouble. Let's go ahead and talk about the, the positive points first. What I like about Katina and Elijah Wan as a match is I do think they are actually a match. I think personality-wise, they mesh. I think the attraction will be there. One of the things that really stuck out is that the two of them kind of share a similar past. He's been the playboy, she's been played by the playboy. <laughs> I mean, it's a little bit of shady matching because I'm just like, oh dang, like, you know, out of all the men, couldn't she have just been given kind of a guy who's a little bit more ready? Now, Elijah Wan has good intentions, but I think he's still kind of working towards that maturity level. I think they are a match and I think this is actually going to help to carry them through the drama, through the ups and downs that they are undoubtedly going to experience because unfortunately Elijah Wan is kind of emotionally, to me, he feels like all over the place. So Pastor Cal was just like, oh, I just like this guy, his personality. He probably is really fun to be around. And we saw that with Johnny too. He seems like a fun guy to be around, to hang out with. But when it comes to romantic partnerships, because those partnerships amplify all of those emotional insecurities that you already have within you, they're gonna blow up. <laughs> So I think that's kind of the thing that we were seeing in the preview and I think that's the thing that's going to happen. I feel like he's not emotionally stable enough for this show and I think that should actually be one of the five top qualities that the experts look for when they're looking at these contestants. They should have really good self-control and really good emotional self-control because this experiment amplifies emotions, it amplifies the experience, but on top of that, it's the one necessary requisite that's going to hold your marriage and your partnership together. What's fun about Elijah Wan, he's very passionate, very fun, you know, has this big personality, but the way that that personality plays out in a partnership can be very troubling because for one, your partner may not have the space to feel their emotions. So usually in a partnership, if you have one partner who's very big with their emotions, the other person tends to suppress theirs. And it creates a very unhealthy dynamic. It's a very familiar dynamic that plays out in a lot of partnerships and relationships. And we're constantly balancing our energy with ourselves and with our partners because it's, it's just a game. You know, it's like a dance that you play. It's a dance of life. But if one partner is always on a 10, it doesn't really give you space to be flexible in your emotions. So eventually it, it pushes people away. It repels people away from you. Another, I think, telling telltale flag that showed up for Elijah Wan, he said that when women would see him, they would say it's too good to be true, which I, okay. <laughs> he says apparently women have like, oh, we don't believe you. It's too good to be true. They're questioning your integrity. They're questioning your true intentions. That's probably because you haven't fully embodied the thing that you're trying to portray. He's trying to portray, he's embracing it, he's excited about it. He feels very passionate and secure about like being this better person and turning a new leaf. But I don't know if that he's fully embodied it. And that was pretty clear in the scene when he was at the strip club. There is a way, I think, for a person to conduct themselves, especially when you got the cameras on you, you're literally on a show called Married at First Sight. Like there's a way to conduct yourself. He looked like a kid in the candy shop that was having fun, like too much fun, to the point where it was probably inappropriate. It just was not giving me, I'm ready for marriage, I'm, I'm ready to be a husband type of vibes, I'm ready to have kids type of vibes. I would say he's at the beginning stage of turning that new leaf. I think he's still needing to do the work on himself to fully embody that maturity. Um, it's not enough to want to be married and it's not enough to want to compare yourself to other people and be like, oh, I want to be married just like everyone else. Everyone's ready at a different stage. And I've already talked about in my previous videos, like the age difference 
is kind of important because men in their 20s, they're still in their building stage, especially in America, because it costs a lot of, it costs a lot. First of all, it costs a lot to be married, to raise kids, to have a home. It's expensive, like it, it costs money. So you kind of have to be in that place if you want to live comfortably to build yourself up to that, like to be able to bring in the money to sustain your family consistently. That's very important, but it's not enough to want to be married. So you might be on a 10 when it comes to your career, but when it comes to partnerships and relationship, you're like a four. So I just feel like he's still needing to mature into himself i'm kind of getting emotionally adolescent vibes from him just a little bit honestly this shows up even in like older people all the time their emotional maturity is just significantly less <laughs> they're significantly um, less emotionally mature because they were stunted at some point in their life they weren't they weren't allowed to feel certain emotions or were, they weren't exemplified how to treat people or how to take care of themselves so they're having to learn how to do that in their adult years. So Katina has admittingly been in situationships. It's one thing to intentionally choose to be in a situationship, which we did have someone from a previous season who chose a situationship on purpose because that was what they were wanting. They weren't wanting anything permanent with that person. It's one thing to choose it. It's another thing to, to accidentally kind of stumble into a situationship. So she was talking about one of her recent partners being someone who happened to be engaged in a partnership with someone who had a girlfriend. Perhaps she hasn't been emanating her full worthiness, her full worth to people. If you're not emanating it, it's probably because on some level you don't fully believe it. So I think that's why she was emphasizing that she's been on this self-love journey for two years. But I would say date for another two years and build that confidence in yourself and like own it times 10. And then to me, no one could ever tell you anything else. So the thing is that they're a match, but they're not necessarily, as far as like having a successful partnership and a sustainable marriage, um, I don't know if they're a match for that. Because if they're both turning a new leaf, they're both maturing into themselves, maturing into this space of embracing marriage, embracing becoming more in their lives, becoming more than just themselves. But it almost feels like they're at their, their beginning stage because she was talking about being the party girl in her past and he was talking about being the playboy. So lifestyle wise, I think they'll be able to have fun and, and mesh well together. But when it comes to actually sustaining a marriage and a relationship, I think they're gonna go through a lot of growing pains. So I think they both need time to transition more into that growth, but they're on the show, so we'll see how everything plays out, and I do definitely wish the best for them. So moving on to Mark and Lindsay. So Lindsay, you know, initially when I first saw her, she comes as, she comes off as very lovable and fun, and she's probably very magnetic, you know, in that sense, but when it comes to people feeling safe around her or people even wanting to sustain a partnership with her, there's, I think, a struggle, and I think there's many things that are playing out there. Mark, to me, again, I stick with what I said before. He seems structured, he seems mature, he seems ready. What he's gonna be challenged with is patience because Lindsay is a very emotional person. Um, again, I do kind of question whether experts choose people who are so emotional to be on this show because it might make a good reality TV, which maybe be may be the reason as to why they're choosing them, but it doesn't make for healthy partnerships. It makes for kind of dysfunction and volatility. So Lindsay said something that really stuck out to me. She said, I never thought I was going to have that true love. To me, that's a very impactful statement because I almost feel like she's been around and mostly been around dysfunctional partnerships. She hasn't seen a lot of healthy partnerships for herself and she's repeated the same patterns in her own life. So what she's revealing to us through that statement is her internal mindset when it comes to partnerships. So you you might want to love people and be very show that you're very happy, you're very fun on the outside, but you might be extremely insecure when it comes to relationships. Just like what I said with Elijah one, you might be a 10 when it comes to your career, but when it comes to a relationship, you're like a four or a five. So that means you're needing to develop a little bit more. You're, le you're needing to do more research. You're needing to practice. Relationships are just a mirror of how we feel about ourselves. So if you're feeling all of those insecurities, you're going to project that into your partnerships. I feel like she's having to do some more healing in her journey to figure herself out more. It was very telling that she showed up to her wedding basically drunk. 
So she's one of the older women on the cast, yet she's conducting herself with the least amount of common sense. Like who shows up, who, who willingly gets drunk before a big event, a most important event. So a lack of seriousness on her part. And unfortunately, I just kind of feel like that was just very disappointing because that really shows that the experts, I think they didn't, sometimes they don't know, but I don't think they chose someone who really took this experiment as seriously as they could have. She described herself as a thunderstorm. So do you remember last season? Y'all remember last season when Michaela described herself as a hurricane? This season we got the thunderstorm. Last season we got the hurricane, this season we got the thunderstorm. So if your personality is something other than like warm, mild weather <laughs> on a regular basis, I'm a little bit concerned because the thunderstorm shouldn't be hitting every day or even every month. That should be hitting maybe once in a blue moon. When you're so emotional in your partnership, it destabilizes your relationship because your your emotions set the tone for your relationship. If you wonder why your relationship isn't stable or isn't exciting or isn't this or isn't that or it's missing all these things, it's because you're needing to bring that in yourself. To me, if someone lacks the self-awareness to understand that stability is, is extremely important in a partnership, you don't have to be stable all the time. Like you don't have to be ground zero, but you have to know how to neutralize yourself. You have to know how to ground yourself. You have to have the tools to do that. If you don't have the tools to do that, you're going to continue to struggle. So you have to learn them quick. What I thought was really cute, the one silver lining is that they both have cats. He's a cat lover, she's a cat lover. I think the cats are maybe gonna get along. I, I think they are gonna get along and I think that will bring them together. But even before it can get started, just like the experts had mildly predicted was that it might end up being volatile before it becomes anything else. So we'll see how it plays out. You just never know sometimes, but um, it's not looking so great <laughs> so far. Okay, so moving on to Alyssa and Chris. Alyssa has definitely proven, just as I saw in her wedding photo with her immaculate makeup, I think she does have high standards. She is particular and usually people who are particular when it comes to this experiment, it's not the best environment for them because you have to be very flexible. You're putting yourself out there. People are seeing a lot of parts of you that you may be shy about sharing. I think there might be a bit of a incompatibility issue that is gonna show up between Alyssa and Chris because she wants like a manly man who's living this very active lifestyle. He is honestly kind of just like a normal chill guy. The one thing I have to say about that is like, a lot of women say that, right? They say that they want an active, attractive person because on the surface, it seems great. It looks great. But ultimately you do wanna make sure you have on that list as well all the traits that make a really good marriage partner, someone who is grounded, someone who is reliable, you want those qualities too. So if you're missing those qualities, you won't be able to have a marriage. And so that's just my thing is hoping that she's going to recognize and will recognize that he honestly, he, to me, as far as like marrying material goes, um, he seems fantastic. So if she recognizes that, great, but I don't know, it just depends. What you're marrying to, you're not just marrying like attractive, active guy. You're marrying into the lifestyle of, oh wait, this person actually wants to grow with me. They want to build with me. They want to be there for me. So we'll see how things play out. I wasn't really looking too positive for Alyssa and Chris. I don't think there's anything else to add about Chris. I think, I, I hope the best for him. <laughs> so the next couple is, Jasmina and Michael. I think out of all the couples so far that I've talked about, they have the most potential to be successful because they're grounded people. They seem grounded. They seem um, willing to learn and willing to grow together. In their pictures, it seemed like they had some kind of physical chemistry together. They seemed pretty relaxed together. So I'm excited to see how things play out between the two of them. So for Michael, I feel like he does kind of have to liven up. It might be the cameras and maybe he's feeling kind of shy in front of them and he's kind of holding his personality back. He says he wants someone to excite him and he, especially he wants depth. He wants someone with intelligence, which to that I would say, the reason why you may not be finding that is because maybe it's the environment you're dating in. What he's describing to me, it almost sounds like academic people. So like intelligent people who went to college um, and who are driven, who are doing more for themselves in their lives. Like you might wanna find a group of people who are doing that. You wanna hang out around them 
that's going to be your group of people. That's where you're going to find a person who's going to intellectually stimulate you. I do think he does need to liven up. Jasmina, she wants someone who she can just have fun with and play with. Like that was such a huge emphasis is how she feels around someone. She wants to have fun and be comfortable and be playful with them. I feel like if he livens up a little bit, he brings some personality or brings that goofiness out, then it's going to be a lot more attractive to her. When it comes to him not, you know, having these like layers, hiding behind a shell and not really coming out, I think that's a confidence thing that he just needs to like shed that layer, shed those walls and just like, like let it out. Just be like, be confident. As far as Michael goes, there's like some more confidence that can like come out and needs to be there. And maybe just not even just confidence as a man, just confidence um, in relationships, confidence, you know, dating. It was kind of concerning. He did say that his last partnership was in three years. So in my previous review, I said he didn't really say enough about partnerships. I didn't hear anything about something long lasting or sustainable. I guess the, the wait was worth it because, you know, here he has, you know, someone who seems pretty grounded and genuine coming towards him. So the wait was worth it. I'm just like three years. I just wonder how picky he is. <laughs> Again, out of all the couples that I've talked about so far, I think they have the most potential to succeed. So our last couple is Noi and Steve. So Noi to me just comes off as very warm, nurturing, caring. To me, out of all the women, she feels like the most ideal on the show as far as like a partner. She seems flexible and like she has all the qualities. She's mature to be a wife. Her and Steve make a very like realistic couple, a realistic and genuine couple. They just seem like genuine, kind hearted good people. So obviously the biggest concern is the money. So Noi mentioned that she wants someone who makes six figures. Six figures is like what a hundred thousand dollars plus? A hundred thousand dollars is about average how much if not more actually probably a little bit more a lot more than that maybe a hundred forty thousand dollars is about on average how much you need to live comfortably with a family um, to also have a savings and a pension and all these things like that's about average. So typically for six figures, you could combine your incomes together and you can make that amount of money together. But her asking for a man who makes six figures, that's about average. Like that's in, in the same age because it is exp it's expensive to have a house, to be married, have kids and all these things. It is pricey. So actually six figures is about average for a couple, how much you would want ideally. Only thing is, is Steve doesn't have a job. Steve, I hope as soon as he heard that he was getting married, signed up for a bunch of interviews because I think that is very important. Like if you're going to have a wife and you're like you're realistically thinking, oh, I'm gonna have a wife and I'm gonna have kids, you need to have those plans set in place. So I'm curious to know what his plan is going to be from there. If being around Noi is going to feel, make him feel motivated to just like get it going. All right, it's time to go. Let's like, let's see some results here. Other than that, I think they have the potential just like Jasmina and Michael to be a really successful couple on the show and to make it. So I wish the best for them. That is my review for Married at First Sight for the kickoff for season 15 in Boston. Make sure you guys are here for my next review. I upload every week. Also, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'd love to hear what you guys think about the show. I hope you guys have a wonderful day or evening and welcome into the new year. Happy 2022.